Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Katie and welcome to another bookish adventure. We are doing the final book review of the Throne of Glass series. We're talking Kingdom of Ash. So if you have followed my weekly reading vlogs covering this A entire journey, the three part that covered this, you will know that it was an emotional, emotional ride. Oh my goodness, it was, yep, tears happened. And in fact, if you watch part three, you will see me cry in that vlog. So I'm gonna put that down. I stupidly thought to eat sweets right now, but then I thought, well, if I eat sweets, I can't cry. So as usual, I'm going to do a spoiler free section first, which will be probably the shortest section ever. This book was amazing. I loved it. Please go read it. Um, <laughs> In short, no, this book was just, oh my God. It is very difficult when you have a series like Throne of Glass where the further and further we are going, the hype is building, the just everything is building, the emotion, the drama, the plot, and you gotta find a way to round that shit up. And it was rounded up well. For me, I, <laughs> when I say I was happy, I mean, I was emotionally traumatized. I enjoyed it. I love this book. I gave it five stars because it had me crying. It had me laughing. It had me yelling. I went from fist pumping in the air to trying not to cry because I was listening to an audiobook and I was getting ready and doing my makeup in the morning for work. Like I was having to rein that shit in. This is also me full of swears. I'm so sorry. It was hard. That book got me emotionally and the further this book went, the more emotional it got. I was seriously worried about certain characters. Like people die. Like this book has death. It did, like, it, other people died in previous books. People died in this one. Um, I will have my one negative, and I'll get that out of the way now. I had this problem. I think it was an error fire that I didn't like it structurally. Because in that one, I felt that Aelian slash Shalina, she was, like, really absent for, like, the first half. And then really came into it in the second half. However, the first half of that book was, like, dominated by, like, new characters like Manon. And I fell in love with her. And then in the latter half of the book, Manon, like, didn't exist. So in this case, we are again following a lot of different point of views because there are a lot of characters by this point and that's fine that is great but I would find that sort of people's threads would be get left hanging and then chapters later they reappear and I'd be like oh my god yeah that was happening like I feel like it was done in a sense of to create ooh cliffhanger ooh like trauma and sense of urgency and oh my god moment however I just forgot these people I know that sounds really bad but because it was going back and forth, back and forth between other people, I was kind of forgetting that other people existed. So that is my only criticism is that, yeah, there's the structurally, um, just, it's just not done to how I would like it, I guess. I just didn't like the fact that you wouldn't hear from characters for ages. And I'd be like, oh, holy crap, yeah, that was happening. So this is kind of it for the spoiler free section because there is not a lot I can say right now without ruining this book series for you. I love this series. I loved it so much. This end book, big as a beast as it was was so good i'm glad i listened to an audiobook as well because it would have taken me probably a longer to get through it and b it was just the woman who narrated it was just amazing i would really recommend this series if like me you thought i'm gonna wait until it all comes out or maybe i'll wait until the hype dies down seriously read it it is really good and it gets better the emotional development and character development is so strong and just such on an a game it is wonderful it doesn't get lost to the plot and the plot doesn't suffer for it it is so perfectly intertwined it is wonderful hence the crying i mean we are not on harry potter level of crying i'm not sure oh i was gonna say i'm not sure i've ever reached that yes we have one other book has made me cry like we were not at that level but it was there it was just mm. so please go read go enjoy and then come back come back and watch the next part of this video okay let's talk spoilers ah! I don't even know where to begin. Okay, so I was so worried about Dorian for the whole of this book. I was so concerned because the blurb said that bonds that have been forged will be broken or severed. And I was like, holy shit, this kid is either gonna go rogue, go on like a suicidal, like destructive mission and he's gonna just, yeah. Or he was gonna flip and then end up siding with like Maeve or Erewhon and I was like, I'm not ready for this. And that moment when he did start siding with Maeve, when he was in Morath, I was like, oh God, baby's not really gonna do this. And you know, part of you's like, no, that won't happen. But that little part of me that had been really worried about Dorian that entire time was like, crap, actually, no, like this could happen. This could be like an even bigger twist that Dorian ends up siding with them. Let's talk death. I'm not over the 13, okay? I'm not over them. I was heartbroken that Ashrin didn't make it after everything. She didn't make it. She didn't get to have her better world. I hate the fact that Manon is now on her own because obviously it's going to take a while for her and Dorian to get to where they need to be. And she still has a lot of fighting to do to get the witches together. And it's just so horrible that Manon doesn't have anyone. Manon just doesn't have just 
that little bit of just why can just some of them survive so that was the point when i was trying to do my makeup and not cry i was like cheering because they were taking out towers and things were going really well and then suddenly they weren't going well and the 13 was sacrificing themselves and i was like i can't do this the other death they got me and for me a surprising one it wasn't actually it wasn't actually gabriel's death that got me it was the after it was aiden's response to it it was all the other phase response to it when they went there when they knelt before his body it was that that's what got me it wasn't his sacrifice because when he actually died and i was reading it i was like oh my god no wait no i was like no no this can't be happening like i wasn't i was like that didn't really make me cry it was the after and yeah that really got me and then obviously we would have chapters from other people's point of view and then we'd come back to it and other people would find out he died and again i would start crying because i was just like i can't do this cut let's discuss cop out endings because because this is a thing none of the main characters died they all came out of it they got their happy endings yada 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 obviously i am so happy about that because i love these babies like these babies mean so much to me and i was like i they, they can't die however it is a bit like hmm should she have killed them i mean no but mm. it's a tough one it is a tough one this is the problem when you write such a saga and it's like well maybe you should kill one for like dramatic effect but everyone just felt so important and so right to the story and was so key and i mean i got so 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 worried for irene when she went to stand off against him and i was thinking maybe she's gonna lose the child and that was gonna have to be i think i've been watching something else i've been watching a lot of once upon a time at the moment so in my head i've constantly got in the background magic comes at a cost so i think in my head i was constantly like magic comes at a cost obviously she had bound her life to kale's in order to like for her, so he could walk and things so i think in the head, back of my head that was constantly in my mind so i think i was always thinking well if she really does go up against erwan and she really does do this like magic comes at a cost is she gonna lose our baby and then i started to wonder well maybe the other healers of the tory will it's gonna be like like with kale it's gonna be like a mass thing and they're all gonna like get him but it was nice it really was nice that it wasn't like ellie and saving the day all the time it was nice that it wasn't her killing Maeve, her killing arrow like it was really nice that like other characters had their moment like you know you've built them up to have their uses and to do whatever she can obviously like get rid of the vol parasite from infected people but but it was that kind of you know will they actually get that moment and the same with dorian i was really helping that hoping that he would get his moment in really freeing the kingdom and saving things because he is so broken oh my god i've just remembered his dad yep his dad that moment with his dad that totally broke me too cried then too it is just all coming back to me just how traumatizing this book was so we began with everyone kind of everywhere in different places and everyone like reeling from the previous event and Aiden in a really bad place with Lysandra and that was just killing me I hated that that was just everyone just had their own like little tensions going on the stuff with Ilian was so brilliant her torture I mean not to be like yay I advocate torture but that was done so brilliant that her not knowing what's real them healing her every time so she doesn't know if it's in her mind like that was so good like with Maeve then trying a different tact and trying to get into her mind to get to do it like so well done like that level of just evil is just everything and her and Ferris's bond was just i absolutely loved it i really loved that having her have that bond especially when she came out of it and they had rescued her and then they were then traveling um to get sort of you know to the main battles and everything their bond i love that she just wasn't just you know jumping into rowan's arms and just kind of being like oh my god you're here you came it was really nice to actually still have her just sit with femoris and just have them just have their little exchanges like that for me was just re again everything was just so perfectly done just everyone's emotional well-being and just their emotional plot is so key to driving this book it is just it i love it so much because they're all just suffering in their own way to be honest like they're all just hating their lives somehow so the other thing is how do you feel about alien kind of coming out of this alive when she's meant to be the sacrifice so i did think that if her and dorian did it together it would be fine um i didn't actually i didn't expect to have that moment where she would end up doing it herself or something else being in his stead and really losing all of her power and i think that is actually quite nice because she was made up to be this thing of she's gonna save us like she's fire she can kill everything like amazing so it was nice and that she chose to write it that she still faced off without that bit of fire i 
think that is quite important that you know although she lost her human side she still fought like a human and that was really beautiful but the whole time all I was screaming was just like can someone get a rook and just take Dorian and just drop him down there because the bitch has fire there are so many moments of this book that just have me just like just losing my mind basically I lost my shit over this book a lot this is absolutely one of my most favorite series now like this is up there am I glad I waited until now yes and no I am so glad I waited till now because to have been able to read this entire series over the course of I think just over a year has been just so good I don't know if I could have waited a year for each book really kind of especially with the last one because obviously Tower of Dawn was meant to be a novella not a real book so there was a massive gap between the actual end thing and the thought of having to wait for that makes me just like no i do wish i'd read it at the time because i was obviously collecting them as they were coming out and i think i had never intended to wait this long i think i thought i was gonna get to the third one start reading it and then i realized it was going to be six or seven and thought you know what i'll just wait i didn't i had never i'd always intended to start reading them and then just never had and then it just became like you know what i'm just gonna wait until they all come out so part of me does wish i had read them at the time because just they were so good and to have had something that good to have read at like all those years past just would have been mm. however being able to read them as a collective has just been such a way more just like dramatic and just epic saga i'm gonna stop now i feel like i've gone on for quite a while and i could keep going on but i won't i will continue because i could just start going into each and every character just every little bit but it was it was so good the deaths were just they got me but as much as i cried the most for gabriel i think the 13 actually hit me harder because manon is now alone and now when i think back at it had my brain have processed that at the time i probably would have cried more it's only now reflecting back that i'm like manon's alone at the time of reading that just like it didn't register really but now i'm like Oh, that series is amazing. So I cannot wait now to read her next one, A Court of Thorns and Roses. But I am also really, really excited to read her newest book, which is aimed at adults. Like, is it going to be that much different? Because this was still quite like full on as like a yar, like teen sort of book. You know, it's still got some sexy time, not overly sexy time, but there's still some sexy time. Emotionally, it's just, ah! emotionally, it's just, yeah, just so painful. So I am really looking forward to reading her new one just to see what the difference really is. And also I love her writing style and I just really want to get back into that world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button and show me your thumbs. As usual, comment below about absolutely anything. Well, say what your plans for the weekend, but obviously the weekend's been, so what did you do for the weekend? If you're new, then hit that subscribe button and ding the bell and never miss a video. I will see you on Wednesday for another weekly reading vlog where I am reading my first ever Terry Pratchett and I may have had a little tiny breakdown about the coronavirus. I may or may not be crying again. Who knows? <laughs>